What's up, you guys? Hand traps. Probably some of the most notorious cards and probably some of the best and worst cards ever invented for our game. They're also probably some of the most main decked or side deck cards or the most talked about cards in the game. Ever since their inception, ever since they came out, they changed the game forever. What I'm here to talk about today, though, is the effectiveness of all these hand traps in this current format, the December 2018 format. Uh, I feel that every format, hand traps develop, hand traps come in and out of rotation, certain hand traps are better than others, certain just fall to the wayside and aren't played again, and some are just so good for particular formats that a lot of people never think about it, and then when they get hit by it, they're absolutely shocked. I have some personal experiences with a couple of hand traps that I'm going to mention here today. I'm going to go over pretty much all of them. They're all pretty straightforward. You guys know them. You guys have played them. You guys love them. You guys hate them. And I think this video will also be informative for you guys because I feel that very soon all of these cards are going to be readily accessible for all players, whether you are casual or competitive, whether you are on a budget or not on a budget, because we already know the new dual power pack is going to re-release a lot of these cards. And I feel that even though it's not till April, that will be before nationals. And I feel that that's really, really important not only for the player base but also just how to prepare for nationals and knowing that you're going to have to expect to come up against these cards but anyways we're gonna get into it and we're gonna just start with probably the most um widely used hand trap and that's ash blossom this card is good against pretty much everything and people will say oh it's not good against certain decks you'll find something to ash so it has been said and I, you correct me if i'm wrong I've, there's close to like 1700 cards that ash can hit you know in any shape or form one of the most notorious cards to hit of course is pot of desires being able to ash desires is amazing your opponent just loses 10 cards they draw no cards they just go neg it's amazing we already know that Ash is without a doubt probably the most popular hand trap. There's been times where people have said that the card is not that good. It was never really that solid against Pendulum Magicians. And, you know, against certain decks, though, it really does shine. If you look at the main decks of the format, we've gone over them multiple times. Ash is effective against Sky Strikers, being able to hit Engage, being able to hit the special summon of Ray from uh, the field spell. And, you know, uh, there's plenty of other cards, you know, depending on what they play. The card's just really solid. It's really good against Thunder Dragons, knowing which effects to hit, you know, especially like Roar and Dark, being able to add to hand or special from deck, really solid. Good against the second effect of Azold, probably one of the most notorious things we all ash is the second effect, so they don't special from the deck, continue on. There's just a lot of cards ash hits, good against trick stars, good against any deck that would add cards, anything that would special from deck, etc, etc, you guys already know. Probably still the number one hand trap to date, probably the most widely played, and definitely a card that is going to continue to be played in pretty much every format, because I feel that there is always cards ash can hit, and it's usually cards that are played in uh, your uh, opponent's deck, so... Next one, Ghost Ogre, of course. You guys already know I'm going through the Ghost Sisters. I'm going to start with Ogre. Ogre is amazing, um, but it is not the best hand trap. I feel it goes in and out of formats. I feel like the card is cool because it does get rid of problematic monsters, and certain monsters won't be able to you know, get their effects if you're able to do that, which I do like about it. I feel that it really shined during Pendulum format because being able to Ogre the Electromite was so huge. These days, Ogre... It does see some main deck play, but mostly you're going to see it in the side deck. The card is good against multi-roll. It isn't really that good, though, against strikers in general. There's not a lot of cards you can hit. I understand that multi-roll is an amazing card to hit, and I have done it multiple times. And I think that it's a fantastic application. However, if you look at the rest of the format, like, yes, you do want that card against, like, the Rongo Bongo deck. But the card is really not good against Thunder Dragons. It's not that good. I mean, it's decent against Alter Guys, believe it or not. Like, a lot of people will be quick to say, oh, well, these hand traps suck against Alter Geist. That's not actually true. You are able to ash the Mulleseek. You are able to ash the Multi-Faker. Even if it's not the best play, you are able to Ogre the Multi-Faker. You are able to Ogre pretty much even the Marionette or, you know, get it off the board. Yes, they'll have protocol, but, you know, being able to hit it is cool. So uh, it's still a solid hand trap, and I feel it's a card that most people play in the side deck now. I've noticed from a lot of, like, the list, the deck list that I've seen at the ARG Orlando, etc., that a lot of people weren't really main decking it. And those that did, I've watched a couple of the deck profiles, already said that they wish they didn't so that kind of shows how it goes in and out of formats but you guys already know ogre is good it deals with problematic cards on the field 
I think also the fact that you can use it on field is amazing. Uh, it does have 1800 defense, being able to set it, they run into it, then they try to activate something, you can pop it off the field is really cool. So uh, Ghost Dugger will always be a uh, uh, hand trap that you will that you definitely want to have um, You know, for every format because you never know when it's going to pop back up or a monster or an effect's going to come out that you definitely want Ogre for that other hand traps can't handle. Uh, next, I've got Ghost Bell. So this was the newest one, the newest uh, Ghost Sister. And this card in the beginning was completely shunned. A lot of people thought this card was trash. A lot of people were like, oh, I'm not going to play that card. Little did we know that it would grow to be one of the most widely played hand traps. I think it's really solid. This format, it was amazing last format. And the reason why is its application against Sky Striker. Being able to hit Kagari is just insane. Now, I know what you guys are thinking. Is that the only reason you'd want to use it? No, if you use this card in conjunction with Ash, you're able to Ash Shizuku at end phase. You're able to bell the Kagari. You're able to bell Soul Charge. I mean, if that doesn't give you a reason to play the card, you can bell Soul Charge. You can bell Monster Reborn. You can bell so many cards in the Thunder Dragon deck. It's not even funny. Like, this card is amazing against Thunder Dragons. Since Thunder Dragons have seen a real, like, like surge in popularity, it's definitely a card that you want to have either in your main or side deck. I've noticed it's pretty much split down the middle 50-50, whether people play it in the main deck or the side, but I think the card overall is amazing. And I think it is definitely a card that you want to have in your arsenal. I feel that all these hand traps, you should have sets of them because you never know, like I said, when they're going to cycle in and out of format. So Bell is amazing. It's getting that reprint, you guys. So yes, I know it's a little expensive right now. The card is going to go down in price. If you are trying to get your invite, if you are trying to, you know, go to any premier events, I do suggest you do either borrow them or, you know, use the, or get them at the time, uh, uh, get up them now, but later on, probably sell them before the reprint or whatnot. But uh, Bell is just an amazing card. Then, of course, we have Winter Cherries. Uh, to be honest, I think Winter Cherries is one of... Um, I think it's one of the most controversial hand traps, if that makes sense. And the reason why I say that is because the community is really split down the middle whether this is a good card or a bad card. A lot of people will say, oh, this card's good because, you know, you can get rid of the problematic monster. That is true, but it does require your deck to be able to fit in Cherry's targets. And I know you can side deck Cherry's targets, but I don't think a lot of people like to do that. Taking up side deck space for extra deck monsters, unless it's a card you yourself are going to play for a specific matchup, is kind of hard. And, you know, since we are limited to 15, that does come up a lot. However, Cherries is great against Azold. It was great against Firewall. You can use it against Gumblar. Use it against number 86, number 75, whatever it is you're trying to hit. I think that a lot of people are quick to say, oh, well, Cherry sucks in certain matchups. I personally don't think it is that great against Sky Striker, but I've been told otherwise that it really comes down to the player. And I guess that's what you can really kind of deduce from Cherries is depending on the player, uh, cherries can be amazing. Cherries can just be a total blowout. Another thing is it's really good against the Slash Draw FDK. Being able to hit the Saryuja is amazing. They pretty much shuts down their entire strategy and they can't really play uh, their normal, you know, OTK, FTK strategy. So that's cool. It has that application. Like I already mentioned, Azold. Being able to... Um, you know, prevent the Rongo deck from going off by hitting 86 is amazing. Yes, there's still a Dark Warrior deck, but without Rongo, they have to go in a different direction that's not as just like polarizing as um, Rongo is. So really cool there. Like I said, it really comes down to the player and the striker matchup because yes, you can. Um, Cherries the Shizuku, and that does come up a lot. Them be not being able to have access to Shizuku is huge. Uh, you know, of course, if you're able to hit Kagari, like if they just activate some of the token, you know, if you have the cherries for the Kagari, I mean, that's amazing. So it really comes down to the situations. And again, it comes down to the player. But cherries is definitely, like I said, another card you want to have in your arsenal because there will be formats where you definitely want it. Pendulums was a format like that. Spirals was a format like that. And I feel that almost every format, there's going to be a card that you're going to want to cherries. So pick up the cherries, pick up the targets, and you'll be good to go. Uh, next, let's see. I guess I'll go with... I'll go with Joel and Lockbird. So Joel and Lockbird is the FTK stopper. What else is there to say? The whole danger deck is a bunch of draw cards. Droll them. Turn ends. Hopefully you can FTK them. Droll is a staple in Trick Stars. So if you're playing Trick Stars, you already play this card. I don't need to sell you guys anything more than that. You guys play this card. For other decks, though, this card is okay against Sky Strikers. I've had people argue that, oh, this card's amazing. They just stop after one engage. Yes and no. Um... I think that the card is cool. I did side it against Sky Strikers uh, when I played in Pasadena, and it was subpar. It did work a little bit, but it wasn't as like impactful as I thought it would be. So that kind of told me as a player, maybe it's not the best card for me to side. I, I didn't have access to Bells, but Bell obviously would have been a better card at the time. 
What I like about Droll though, and it's the same thing with Rest in Peace Max C, is that this is a lingering hand trap. This is not a just stop one and that's it hand trap. It's a card that lingers for the entire turn and I like cards like that. I like cards that get maximum value from minimum input and the ability to just Droll your opponent and it linger the entire turn is amazing. Uh, it does have a lot of applications. Pretty much it, it, it can be used against almost every matchup. It's just terrible against Alter Geist. Like it, it just really is. But the ability to Droll like... Um, obviously a trick star deck is crazy. Being able to droll the FTK danger decks is amazing. Being able to droll, um, Thunder Dragons is a weird, kind of like a weird interaction it actually happened to me at locals and it does stop dark being able to search. It does stop your ability to use a regular Thunder Dragon with Titan. So there are those little interactions that they're very niche, but when they come up, they're actually quite effective. I think droll is just a card that, you know, will be around every format. And it is, again, something you want to have in your arsenal. You want to have all these cards in your arsenal. And there will always be a time to play Droll. Like I said, if you're really scared of an FTK, this is the card that stops it. Cherry stops it. Droll stops it. We were all signing these as soon as the FTK came out. So Droll is definitely a card we will see in pretty much every format in some shape or form, depending on what is played. Next, I've got Gamma. Now, this is one of my favorites. I go back and forth uh, because we already know you have to run the damn vanilla with it. Now, I know that that kind of sucks. Drawing driver sucks. But the impactfulness of Gamma is insane. The ability to just negate a monster effect, you know, get two pieces of defense out or offense if you're going second is just insane. Being able to start your turn like with a spell like Terraforming, they Ash or Droll, you chain Gamma. I mean, it's insane. You can make Omega with it. You can use it as Link material. This card has a lot of value, and I feel like if people know how to play this card, it's good against almost every matchup. You can use it against almost anything, and you know, you're not just stunning the opponent. You're getting rid of the problem, and that's where I think Gamma really shines because being able to get rid of the problem is like the way you win this game. Being able to take away a resource from your opponent is huge. Not just stunning them, but taking away that resource source is amazing so i think gamma is awesome and at worst case scenario it's 3500 damage on your turn if you activate it on your turn you got the thousand from the gamma the 25 from the vanilla and i mean you're good to go so just pray you don't draw that driver like oof. anyways i you know i always got to mention gamma next i've got effect Baylor. this card is one of the one of the oldest hand traps it's not the oldest one on this list you guys probably know which one it is but uh Valor, it's been around for a really long time and this card is your substitute if you are not able to shell out the money for impermanence just yet we already know about the reprint but Valor, uh it's amazing uh manav has been playing uh, multiple Valors in his sky striker list if you saw his last like two regional tops he got second place at san jose first place at seattle in the last two weekends and he was talking about how effective Valor is it's good against pretty much everything it can hit uh cards they can hit ultra guys which is insane like most people never see that coming some in marionette you know you go to you know you just go you put your hand on your deck as you're about to go do something you get very you're just like what like you don't get your protocol you don't get your manifestation it's kind of insane like you can hit multi-faker you can do a lot of things with that card and i think it's really cool so uh, Valor does have a lot of applications. It's not great against Thunder Dragons. Like, yes, you could hit Solar, but that's just, ugh. Impermanence is way better in that instance. But Valor is cool. I think Valor does have good applications. It can be used against Striker. You know, being able to hit the links when they activate their effect is pretty cool. Like I said, an in Enphase, Shizuku, or Kagari is great. Or being able to hit Hayate before they, they enter battle so they can't do the damage. They can't uh, dump anything is good, too. I feel like Valor is just a very good overall generic hand trap. Kind of similar to Ash Blossom. It has applications. I feel against every matchup. So definitely a card you want to play if you are not able to shell out for impermanences just yet. On that note, impermanence. All right, here's the thing. The card is expensive as shit. I don't think it deserves that price tag. I don't. I've had them since day one. And I'll tell you, when I played Altergeist, I felt a little more biased. I felt like, oh yeah, this card's insane. Impermanence Faker, which doesn't happen as often as you think. It really doesn't. It's insane when it does, but it doesn't happen that much. This is basically a glorified effect veiler. However, through all my testing, and I do main deck this card in pretty much every deck now, what I've noticed with this card is I love the ability to, you know, use multiple in a turn. I love the ability to set it and to shut off back row, and I can't tell you how many times that comes up. You're going to have players that aren't paying attention. You're going to set your impermanence in said column. Your opponent is going to have a card in that column and you turn off that card or they activate a card in that column and guess what they're under an impermanence that you said it doesn't work and they're just like what i'm like yeah read the second line of text pretty crazy you guys this card is going to be readily readily available as of april 5th of 2019 get your copies 
you'll see why the card is so good. Again, I personally feel even as a competitive player, it is not worth its almost $100 price tag at all whatsoever a generic card like this should not be that expensive i feel cards like this should be readily available for everyone because they help you combat problems in the format that's exactly what this card does so good against so many decks i don't think it's that good against striker like there's niche interactions again kind of like valor but so good against summon sork so good against um you know like being able to turn off colossus so that you can play that's how sky strikers beat thunder dragon sky strikers beat thunder dragon's pretty pretty it's pretty like 50 50 a lot of the times if they don't if they don't have their anchor or their mind control or whatever depending on their side deck you know impermanent shuts off the colossus and they're free to play engage that's insane and guess what it lingers for the whole turn again these cards that linger i think are the best ones in the game so impermanence overpriced yes good yes gonna be reprinted soon kind of kind of soon yes pick them up cards and investment cards amazing you won't regret playing it uh, when national seasons come. And guess what? We're all going to have access to them, so expect them to be there. And you can't call by the grave it. Uh, I think I've pretty much gone through. I am down to the last two. So I was going to mention Skullmeister, but that card is neither here nor there. That's kind of like an honorable mention on this list. I'll have it up here just for a little bit. It's here nor there. I mean, it's a cool effect, but I feel like I haven't seen enough people using it. Will it see possible play? Maybe. That card... Is one of the weirdest cards that comes in and out of formats very rarely and when it does though it is impactful so just keep keep uh, you know in the back of your head that that is another option but I didn't really want to you know end the video with those I wanted to talk of course about DD Crow got to talk about DD Crow right like DD Crow uh, cards nuts uh, during either player's turn you know banish a card insane being able to banish the target from Kagari being able to banish uh, anything where they go into the graveyard being able to banish an ABC piece being able to banish anything ridiculous you guys already know how good crow is crow is just like nuts it has applications against everything you can crow any kind of target you can crow anything that you know would get in your way anything that they're trying to get back from the grave and i mean it's just insane so crow is yeah crow is amazing and last but not least I'm, tr I'm sorry if this video is long you guys but i can't end this video without talking about my personal favorite hand trap right now artifact lancia this card is insane and I mean insane. It is one of the best cards against Rongo Turbo. When you Lancia them, you turn off their Malicious. You turn off their Phantom Knights. You turn off their Sword. I repeat, you turn off that freaking Sword. Because, my God, if there is one card that annoys me, it is that damn Sword. And you turn off the Malicious. Yes, they're still playing Malicious. Being able to turn off the Phantom Knights is insane. Being able to make it to where they can't do any of that is nuts. I won a game because I literally ashed him and they him in the same turn and it was just broken. Card is great against Thunder Dragons. When they go Gold Star, he just lands it, the game's over. Like, not even the game's over, but the turn is basically over. It hurts them a lot if they don't have like a follow-up play. Lancia is a card that is a common, so everyone has access to it, that I feel is just really, really solid. And it's a card that I don't think gets enough attention, but it's definitely a card you will see in side decks. It's definitely a card you will see um, in most formats. When Invoked Mech Knights was a deck, it was so good. Invocation, nope, Lancia, you don't get anything. It's insane. So just think about that, you guys. I think that the more we, um, you know, explore these hand traps, the more, you know, we'll learn, you know, about the game, like the competitive side, the casual side. But Overall, I'm a huge fan of these hand traps. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to smash that like button. Like I, get, like I said, sorry it's a long video, but we went over like 9 or 10 hand traps. So 2 minutes a pop, so to speak, not bad. But if you guys enjoyed these kind of discussions, let me know. This is just my overall thoughts with hand traps' as format. I'm sure I forgot some of them. I'm not countering the battle ones like Trigodian Gores or Battle Fader or Scarecrow, any of that. But these are the main ones you're going to see this format. I've talked about all their applications. I'm sure I missed a lot of things, but if you guys have any niche uh, interaction with hand traps, just let them let me know in the uh, comments below. What is your favorite hand trap? Mine right now is Artifact Lancia. What's yours? Let me know in the comments below. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Give it a thumbs up. Thank you for watching.